Welcome again to Delivering a Seamless Experience with Microsoft Office 365 Productivity Solution. My name is Becky Wiegand, and I'm your host joining you from TechSoup's headquarter office in San Francisco. Today we'll be joined by two presenters from Microsoft that we're fortunate to have joining us. Brian Von Etzelson, who also goes by BVA, who is a Senior Technical Product Manager at the U.S. Microsoft Office, and also Manish Agarwal, who is a Senior Product Manager with U.S. Microsoft Office as well. I am again Becky Wiegand, and I'm the Program Manager here at TechSoup, where I've worked for about six years uh, writing articles and running webinars and blog posts to try and help nonprofits achieve their missions more effectively with technology. You'll also see assisting you in the chat today Ali Bazdikian, who is an interactive events and video producer here at TechSoup. And she'll be on hand to help grab any of your questions, help you with any technical issues, and chat any resources out to you throughout the webinar. A quick look at today's agenda. I'll do a, a fast introduction of TechSoup. We'll do some polls of our users who are on the line with us today just to figure out what version of Office you're using and how you currently collaborate. And that will help guide our presenters a little bit in how they present their content. We'll take a look at Office in the Cloud and talk about some features and benefits. And we'll see some live demos of Office 365 and the different pieces. We'll also give an overview of the different plan options available for nonprofits. And then we'll have time for some more demo and Q&A. So quickly, who is TechSoup? We're a 501c3 nonprofit that's working towards the day when every nonprofit, library, foundation, social benefit organization on the planet has the technology, knowledge, and resources to work at their full potential. We've been around since 1987, serving nonprofits in more than 60 countries, and already having reached more than 200,000 social benefit organizations. We're continually offering new products and services in our catalog, uh, including things like consulting services, which we also have some new consulting services on Office 365. So for those of you interested, we'll talk more about that later. And newer options like Windows 8.1 and QuickBooks 2014. Now moving us into the topic of the day, some of you have already started answering in the chat window, but go ahead and click on your screen to let us know what version of Office you're currently running. Are you up to date in Office 2013? Are you one version back at 2010? two versions back in 2007? Or are you using Office 2003 or earlier? Or maybe you're not using any version of Office. So go ahead and click those links on your screen. Click one of those radio buttons. And that will help us know kind of where our audience is at today so that we can speak most effectively to your needs. I'm going to give a few more seconds so everybody has a chance to participate. So go ahead and click those radio buttons. I'm going to go ahead and show the results right now, but you can continue clicking on your screen if it's available to you. So it looks like around half of our audience today is on Office 2010, and around 27% is on Office 2013. So it's great that most of you are already using either the most up-to-date or very close to it uh, Office Productivity Suite. and are already familiar with uh, features like the ribbon. So for those of you using 2003 or earlier, there may be some features that look a little less familiar to you, uh, but our presenters will have an opportunity to give you uh, a bit of familiarity today while they do their demo. One other quick question for you. How are you currently collaborating with one another? So this is a multiple choice and multiple answer option. So you can click whichever of these apply to your organization. Do you have remote staff or board or volunteers that you're collaborating with online? Do you send a lot of attachments? Do you need to co-author or co-edit documents? Uh, are you sending large files like videos or giant PowerPoints? Um, are you sharing files and folders? Are you sharing updates on social media with coworkers or board members? Or maybe you're not yet collaborating online and you'd like to be and if I don't have an answer here that you think should be here, go ahead and chat into us uh, with what that is. And again, I'll just give another little few seconds here so that everybody has a chance to weigh in. 
We have one person who chatted in that they are using ShareFile, a Citrix program with one of our partners, other donor partners here. We have another person commenting that they are using Skype for instant messaging only internally. It's great. So I'm going to just give us five more seconds here. Four, three, two, one. Some folks saying that they are struggling with Google Apps and Office. Another person saying they are using Google Docs. Somebody else saying they are doing teleconferencing. So these are all really helpful. So it looks like more than 80% of our audience is collaborating by using and sending lots of attachments. And around the same amount, almost 80%, are sharing files and folders. So those are the two biggest areas that people are using. And then the co-authoring and co-editing of documents and having remote staff and volunteers are also very important to a lot of people. So this is great helpful information for us as I bring our presenters on the line to take us into a tour and a conversation about Office 365 and some of its features and show us what it looks like. So welcome to the line Brian and Manish. We are really happy to have you join us today. Feel free to give a little bit more introduction about yourself if that makes sense. And um, you know, take it away. Awesome. Thank you. Um, so this is Brian Von Axelson. Uh, many people know me as BBA. Uh, I was acronymed to Microsoft several years ago, uh, so it's become a brand. Uh, and I will be joined a little bit later today by Manish. Uh, we both uh, work in the U.S. Microsoft Office division, uh, focusing on Office 365. And uh, we're excited to be with all of you today and talk about not only the great solution of Office 365, but how our nonprofits and you know it's one of the great things about Microsoft and, and some of the, the programs and the charitable uh, donations and you know it's really just a great feature uh, that you know I feel we have uh, working for Microsoft uh, that we can offer uh, to organizations such as yourself. So as we get started, I want to kind of first look at you know what is impacting and we can see some of it not only from you know the information in the polls uh, on how everybody is working with one another but also uh, in the IM windows as we see some that are starting with Office 365 some that are using some of the competitive products as we think about Google uh, and, and the Google apps uh, and some of the integration well how do I get Office and you know, a disconnected uh, experience sometimes. But we're also looking at the landscape of, you know, how do we work? Uh, and that, you know, as we saw in there in the IM window, uh, that, you know, we have uh, some Skype for internal IM, we got some cell phone conversation. Devices are prevalent, and many of us are using multiple devices. And one of the things that we talk about at Microsoft is having that seamless experience as we go across the different devices, including, as you will see on this slide here, non-Microsoft platforms. Um, we had some great announcements recently on iPad. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. Uh, but you know, what do I have as an experience as I go between these different devices? And we have apps you know, from the phone perspective, apps from a tablet perspective, and then of course the traditional desktop and laptop experience. And as we continue the conversation, how do we communicate? Well, many of us are communicating with all these different types of devices. We may be using Voice over IP. I'm using Voice over IP right now to broadcast to you. Many of you are listening to the stream. Uh, we may have, you know, dial tone, uh, PBX, you know, the old POTS phones, uh, IM chat. Email, uh, email used to be the prevalent you know, way, video, audio conferencing, and, and of course social uh, as we think about you know, some tweeting of our conversation today. But if we think about from an Office 365 perspective uh, with our acquisition of Yammer, uh, how we can really have that social conversation. So we start to look at you know, there's multiple ways that we communicate with one another. And then there's this you know, industry change that's affecting not only the way we work, uh, the way we consume information, the way services are delivered to each of us, both from a professional business perspective and from a consumer perspective, uh, that you know comes back to the the 
word known as cloud, and what does the cloud mean, uh, and that enablement. And I, I really look at the cloud as an enabler to deliver these experiences, deliver these services to the different devices that we may be connected. And now we start to look at having that connected experience. And what we end up looking at is, well, do we have a connection to the Internet? And through many of these devices nowadays, uh, they are coming built in. Um, but then we also have you know, the connectivity that may be brought into uh, the workplace. There may be some of you at the local coffee house uh, that may have the connectivity right there that you're joining us through. Uh, it may be from a home perspective, uh, but we start to look at how do we have connection uh, and then use the cloud as an enabler to deliver this experience and to have that flexibility that is both good and bad, quite honestly. Um, great because that means I can get access to my information uh, as long as I have connectivity no matter where I'm at. Uh, bad in that from the whole work-life balance, and I know that many of you are dedicated to the nonprofits, you know, and there's a lot of time and effort and energy, uh, we see that bleeding over. It's not that 9 to 5 conversation. and um, It's an always on conversation. And, and the, the consumer life, the things that may be personal that we may, we may be working with, um, may you know, bleed over into the things that we're doing from our professional life and our careers and, and supporting the causes uh, that we have chosen to engage with. So as we think about the office vision, uh, the vision is around you know, that experience and doing your best work. And of course, we're trying to incorporate some of the technology advances that have come into the marketplace over the last couple of years as we think about Office on any device. And again, that's both Microsoft and non-Microsoft devices. As we think about taking advantage of touch, ink, voice, that we can have that co-authoring. I saw many of you uh, answering to the co-authoring and co-editing, uh, that we can work with data. Uh, it's no longer about saving to the local drive. How do we share this information? How do we collaborate? Uh, how do we gather insights? How do we socialize the information? Uh, and we see a lot in the social media. As we think about you know, that video, audio, web conferencing, the ability to have internal meetings, especially with the mobile and remote staff, and again that flexibility that they can join quite literally from anywhere as long as they have connectivity. But also as we extend out to maybe working with you know, prospective clients, maybe working with some partner organizations that you might be partnering with. You know, how do we incorporate not only internal conversations but external conversations as well from a voice, web, audio, video conferencing? Then we start to look at that insight and that personal BI is what we like to talk about at Microsoft. What's important to you in having access to that information? And being able to visualize and see and actually work with the data, we've got some really cool tools when we think about how we can map and, and look at the geo-visualization of the data points. And then you don't have to be that mathematician that excelled in statistics. Uh, as we look at how do we ask questions, um, we can actually use natural language query. And, and have it interpret what we're looking for, and then provide the data set. Now as we go through this empowerment, we also need to make sure that we provide the appropriate concerns around security, around managing risk, about compliancy, about standards. Uh, and Office 365 uh, is one of the leaders in the industry. And in fact, we recently attained, and we're the only cloud provider to attain this, is the EU certification uh, for the European Union, uh, which is the highest certification that can be accomplished. And it was just a great testament to the investment of Microsoft and security, privacy, and offering this service 
uh, but you know, with the standards and of course maintaining that compliancy as we think about HIPAA compliancy, ISO compliancy, FISMA, uh, all part of the U.S. standards and certifications that we hold. So as we look at the conversations, I saw that over half of you are on Office 2010, uh, so that means that you have been introduced into the more modern Office, uh, some of you even with Office 2013. But when many people hear Office 365, the first thing that pops into their mind is, well, it's Office. And that is true uh, as we think about the Office desktop apps available, as you'll see, as one of the offerings with our E3 SKU. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. Office mobile, as we look at our mobile devices, particularly the phones, uh, and have the different apps available uh, across the Windows phone built in, uh, and then apps for the iPhone as well as Android devices. And then, of course, what is now known as Office Online or Office in the Browser, which quite honestly is what many people think Office 365 is. It's the browser-based version of Office. You do have that capability, and as you can see by the graphic, plus a whole lot more as we start to think about you can have the traditional on-premise desktop apps that many of you are currently using. And while I will agree with Becky and that many of you are using Office 2013, if you are not subscribing to Office 365, uh, you do not have the latest Office apps because with our releases and updates, we've made hundreds of updates to the Office 2013 platform delivered through Office 365. And depending on if you've updated and done some of the Surface Packs, you may have or may not have all the features and functionalities that we have in Office 365 uh, that would be comparable to Office 2013. Uh, but it again shows that you know, things are a little bit different. It's not about that Office two, three years ago. It's about continuous innovation and delivering that innovation in a rapid cycle. And we actually release new features uh, on a quarterly basis. Uh, from an Office 365 perspective. Here just kind of showing some of the things that we look at when we talk about Office 365 going above and beyond Office is we do have the capabilities with the Exchange Online server for our business class email, capability to do file sharing uh, as we think about not only OneDrive um, as part of your offering, OneDrive for Business, uh, which is a great file sharing solution and recently upgraded to one terabyte of space, the audio video web conferencing capabilities delivered through Link. Many of you are using Skype. Uh, I kind of think of uh, Skype and Link uh, as, a, as a relationship there. One's targeted to consumer uh, with, with our Skype and then one to the commercial space as we think about Link. Of course, financially backed service level agreement. However, as you're going to see, um, you know that is going to be a little bit different for us as we have a conversation from a nonprofit and charitable organization, because in some instances it will be free, um, and so you know that changes that financially backed SLA. But again, knowing that we're committed to delivering the Office 365 experience, uh, and you know quite honestly putting our money where our mouth is, uh, where in some other cloud-based solutions they offer you service credits. And think about differentiating not only cloud but also Office 365. A couple things I want to highlight. I kind of mentioned there at the beginning Office up to date. So you maintain that as your Office 365 solution. But also one of the big differences between not only Office 365 and our competitors, but also Office 365 uh, as we think about traditional on premise licensing is that it's licensed from a user perspective and you actually get five devices per user. So five PCs or Macs for the office. And then you can also do five tablets and then five mobile devices. Uh, so many different ways that you can have that seamless experience across the different multiple devices that you or some of your peers may be using. 
And it's again looked at from a per user perspective. Now one of the questions that comes up a lot is, well if it's in the cloud, does that mean I need to be connected all the time? Well you can save to the local drive, but again the cloud enables that seamless experience across. You can sync the files for offline viewing and editing and it automatically syncs back. Or you can actually work from the cloud uh, and actually have it come down from the SharePoint site or the OneDrive site. So many different options, but what I want to land there is that you do have that offline experience if you are not necessarily connected. Then one of the Brian, big really quickly, sorry just to sure. interrupt you. We had one question of clarification that just came in that I thought was important to ask while we were talking about it. So is it 5 mobile plus 5 PCs plus 5 phones, or is it 5 devices it in total? It is. So it's 5 and, and 5 and 5. It's five, five, and five, right? So five PCs or Macs to install the Office Professional Plus. So to install the Office software, then recently we announced the iPad. So that's a tablet. You may have an Android tablet. You know some different things. So ability to have licensing on the tablet devices, as well as licensing on your mobile phone devices. So Great. we typically Thank call that the five that. by five. Yeah, but it but it's actually now changed to the five by five by five because we just made those tablet announcements as well. Now one of the big things Terrific. that is very attractive to many businesses is that you're not maintaining these servers, you're not purchasing the capital expense for the hardware, you're not learning how to manage it yourself um, or hiring the IT consultants because uh, Microsoft does manage a fair amount of that. And for some of you, um, you'll probably be right at home and setting it up. Uh, some of you may want to you know, work with a Microsoft partner uh, in actually bringing together the solution. But again, minimal upfront cost because it's not a capital expenditure. You don't have to worry about the maintenance and maintaining not only the hardware but the software, service packs, updates, things of that. That's all taken care of as part of the service. So really this is what we look at when we think about why do we want to choose the Microsoft Cloud? How can we be more productive? Again, across the different devices anywhere. How can we quite honestly be more professional? Have a great commercial based experience versus trying to put together some of the consumer tools whether that's Microsoft or non-Microsoft consumer tools and bringing that together, really delivering a commercial type of experience. And then also really simplify it but also stay in control. So before I hand off to Manish who is going to take us through some of the features and functionalities and show a demo, I found a great video um, from some of our nonprofits, what I would consider your peers. And so let's take a look at what they have to say about Office 365. Welcome to the Boys and Girls Clubs in Delaware. We provide services to over 20,000 kids throughout the state of Delaware. We provide recreational, educational, and sports activities and, and before and after school care programs. You're at Northwest Sustainable Energy for Economic Development. We help communities develop clean energy projects such as solar power, wind power, and energy efficiency. As a small nonprofit, we wear many hats. My mission is not to be an IT administrator. My mission is to work on curbing the effects of global warming with having our outlook hosted in the cloud if our server has a failure, we can still be operational. But we don't have a lot of extra money laying around, so Microsoft so I'm just hearing in or seeing in the chat valuable. window that sound is not coming through, which is we strange because it is coming through for me. 
So I'm not sure what's happening there, but around the world some great nonprofits are sharing their testimonials of how Office 365 has helped Microsoft their organization. Some people are saying they're hearing it fine, so I'm going to go ahead and mute myself again. capabilities and communication capabilities that we otherwise would have struggled to find ways to pay for. Everyone at PATH has access to it, whether they're here or around the world, so we don't constantly have to keep emailing a PDF emailing a Word document. They log into the SharePoint site, they click on a link, the document's theirs. We can build more solar energy projects, we can do more wind projects with that money that's been freed up by Microsoft. For many of our kids, the Boys and Girls Club is a home away from home. We're going to be able to spend more of our time helping our young people because we're going to be spending less of our time trying to manage our system. Something that, you know, I can show and I can explain to my daughter and I can point to it. You know, I feel really good about that. We can all do this and this is how easy it can be. Awesome. Let's go ahead and we'll bring in Manish. And Manish, I'll Thanks. turn it over to you, my friend. Thank you, BBA. Um, hello, everybody. This is Manish Agarwal, and uh, glad to be here. And thank you for taking the time and giving us this opportunity uh, for letting us talk how Office 365 can uh, help uh, you and your nonprofit organizations. Um, I will go through some slides that uh, show the features of Office 365 across the various uh, products and also do a short demo, but I do want to uh, leave enough time in the end for BVA to go through actually some of the questions that have been popping up on how people can get the nonprofit um, uh, Office 365 for nonprofits and uh, also leave some time for Q&A. Uh, so uh, as discussed, uh, uh, Office, uh, as we know, the trend is multiple devices per users, people bringing their own devices, and so we do want to ensure that uh, people can access and use Office on all of those devices. Hence, the 5x5x5 five by five by five, uh, license access that we discussed earlier across PCs and Macs, across tablets, and across smartphones. Um, we released the Office uh, apps for iPad, specifically Word, Excel, and PowerPoint, uh, about a month ago, and we have seen a tremendous uh, momentum uh, on those. Uh, we last announced that there have been 27 million downloads of those apps, and so these apps are built natively for the iPad with the touch experience in mind. Uh, they are free to download, so anybody can download the apps and view the documents, but in order to edit, create, and collaborate, you need an Office 365 subscription. And, uh, so we, uh, and uh, these apps join a growing family of apps that we already had on the iPad, like Link and OneDrive and OneNote, and so this is part of our commitment to make sure um, that Office is available to the users where they want it and how they want it. Uh, with Office, uh, we want to make sure that uh, people are able to access their documents uh, on any device at any time, and so everybody gets uh, one uh, terabyte of uh, storage uh, in OneDrive, and uh, they can access their documents uh, at any time. Uh, uh, when you log in from a browser, you see all of your recent documents and it's easy to get to the documents that you have been working on. Uh, while the documents are available online, you can always sync them and have a local copy on your machine so that you can work with them offline, and then, of course, when you get back online, they will sync back to your OneDrive storage. Uh, we have made it really easy for people to get the things that they want to do faster and more efficiently uh, in applications like Word and Excel. And I'll skip this slide because we'll be doing a short demo that uh, walks us through these, uh, some of these new and exciting features. Um, again, coming back uh, to the fundamental um, of uh, being able to access your information on the go, uh, even though you have Outlook installed on your machine, you are able to log in into the browser and access the same Outlook functionality um, in the browser. So you have the similar rich experience for Outlook. You can create meetings uh, with the people that you're working with through your calendar. Uh, you can see the presence information because IM and Link is integrated into the browser experience. So you can start instant conversations, see who is free and busy, and immediately get to the people that you need to. Um, 
we have also made it very easy for people to edit their documents in the browser mode. And so we have provided a lot of new features and functionality in the Office Online version of the applications. So you have the familiar ribbon interface at the top. Uh, you have the comments feature, and you can reply in line so that you can easily get to some edits while you're in the browser mode and get that job done. Uh, with Office 365, we also have a new functionality called Office On Demand. And what that does is if you are on a machine, say uh, in an airport terminal or on some other user's machine, and you need that full rich application for Office, you can actually log in with your uh, Office subscription and download a temporary rich application of Word or Excel or PowerPoint onto, your, onto that machine. And once you are done and you log out, that instance goes away from the machine, so you haven't left any trace of it. And it doesn't count towards your install of five licenses on five PCs or Macs. So that is one additional feature available to Office 365 customers. Um, again, going back to how Office helps you look more professional and get more stuff done, uh, there's online meetings with uh, colleagues and customers spread all across the country. Uh, people need a good way to collaborate and meet up with them. So HD quality meetings with multi-party functionality, uh, easily able to share content, actually present a whiteboard and draw on the content at the same time, instant messaging along with it. All of those features are available as part of Link Online. Uh, folks that are not on Office 365 can join easily from a browser. And uh, once they do that, it won't ask them to install that run uh, application again. It will be instantaneous even through a browser application. Of course, today it's imperative for everybody to have an online presence. And so with Office 365, you have the ability to uh, easily establish your website with your own domain name. There are various templates that are available within the service. And there are no additional hosting fees. It is included as a part of uh, the Office 365 subscription. Um, coming back to the concept of uh, sharing files easily with customers and partners, uh, all of the files are available in your OneDrive for Business, and you can easily co-edit and share the files with your users, uh, with your uh, colleagues and customers. Uh, you can easily reply within the comments, within the Office Online features. You can share files directly from within the application and also when you are in your OneDrive, you see a list of all of your documents. You hover over the document and it brings this pop-up window where it gives you a preview. You can share easily from within this window. So you don't have to open up the file and do a bunch of complicated things to share the file. Um, so it's very easy to share and give editing permissions and to share files both with internal uh, folks internally in your organization as well as externally. Of course, email is the bedrock of uh, the Office 365 subscription, and uh, uh, Office 365 provides 50 GB mailboxes, uh, same functionality in the online Outlook application as the desktop application with malware protection, uh, enhanced features like archiving and uh, legal and mail hold in the E3 uh, subscription, and we'll get a little bit more into that later. And Outlook is also connected. You can also connect um, it with your social networks and get updates from Facebook and LinkedIn. Uh, with that being said, I'd like to spend a couple of minutes uh, doing some uh, demos. And so we'll start with Word. And uh, let me share my desktop quickly. Uh, so I'm hoping that people can see my desktop. If not, uh, please uh, uh, let me know. And uh, what we'll do is we'll open up a Word document. And uh, you will notice over here that uh, Word recognizes I am signed in as Katie Jordan, which is the demo persona. And so Word recognizes me. And it, it actually tells me uh, over here that I can pick up where I left off on this document. And so I could have been working on this document earlier, so I don't need to scroll through and find out where I left it. And so I click here, and I immediately go to the place where I last left this document. Uh, we mentioned about the editing features, and so there are some comments here in, um, that um, a colleague has made, and so it's very easy for me to respond uh, here, and so I can just click, um, and so it, is, it, it comes across as a natural conversation even in the comments view. 
Uh, one exciting feature with uh, Word 2013 is how we have made it easy to get stuff from PDF documents. We all experience working a lot with PDF documents, and uh, so uh, this is a PDF document that I have, and let's say that I needed to copy this table uh, from this PDF document onto my Word document. And if I do that, notice the loss of uh, uh, templates and uh, how the functionality of the table has been lost in terms of how it is uh, formatting over here. And so the easy way to do it is I can go back to the PDF document and actually open it, open it with my Word application. And so it opens up in Word. Not only I can edit that document in that uh, Word uh, format, but I can easily copy this table over here. And now when I copy it into this Word document, notice how the table comes along with the full functionality intact and with the full formatting intact. And so it's a very easy way to sort of work across documents and we all know that we work a lot with PDF documents and to trying to bring that full fidelity between the different document types. Uh, let's jump into Excel. So Excel is of course where a lot of people uh, spend our time uh, analyzing the data that we have and how do we derive insights. And so with Office 365, we want to make it easy for the people to get to those insights faster. Uh, you will notice here that I have got some data around uh, some events that are being organized by certain representatives and what are the amounts associated with them and the dates. The data that comes to us often isn't in the format that we want. In this case, there is some code, a uh, short acronym for the event, the event uh, type, and then the rep name. But in order to really make any sense of the data, I need to sort of parse this data. Ordinarily, I would have uh, wa wanting to type this data individually into different columns, but notice how Excel is smart, and when I type uh, John here, and when I type Jenny, Excel recognizes the format or what I'm trying to do, and so it automatically flash fills, if you will, the remaining entries in that column, and I just need to press Enter, and all of those things are automatically populated over there. Similarly, as I type in events, advertising, Excel again recognizes everything, and fills in uh, all of the remaining entries. So really a quick and easy way to get to the data inside that you need. Let's go ahead and select this data, and you will notice this quick analysis icon that pops up. And what I can do over here is if I want to see how to better represent this data in the form of uh, data bars or color scales, and so without having to see what it will actually look like, I can just hover over these different types and it will give me a preview of what that formatting will look like and I can select whatever is appropriate. Uh, similarly, if I click on charts and I hover over these different chart types, it actually gives me a view quickly in a second on what that chart will look like uh, so that I can decide which one is the most appropriate for my audience. Um, we all uh, need to work with pivot tables, but it sometimes becomes complex on how to create a pivot table, what are the parameters, in this case, we have also made that super easy. You click on tables and it gives you different pivot table options and by clicking that, it will automatically create that pivot table for you with all of the pivot table fields populated and so it's a very easy way to convert that data into a pivot table. Uh, the last thing that I want to show is something that we call uh, Power BI and uh, this is available in Office 365 as well. And we really want to democratize the way information is shared with people. And so this is a way for having visual, rich, interactive charts uh, for your audience by getting to the data in a very easy to consume manner. And so um, you will notice over here that there is data around gross margin by category, how it translates into the sales amount. And I can easily filter down. So by clicking on cameras and camcorder, the entire chart recognizes that that is what the detail I'm looking for, and so it filters down for that. I can click back here again, and it will uh, go back to the entire data. Uh, I can pop out a particular chart to see it in greater detail in this case, and there is also an element where I can see how it's performing over time, uh, how it is performing at a point in time, 
I can do filtering again within these individual charts. And so, for example, looking just at the cell phones, uh, how the cell phones category has behaved over time. Um, with that, folks, I'm going to hand it back to BVA and uh, uh, hoping um, that uh, you guys um, uh, will get the answers to your remaining questions and especially how to get Office 365 for your organizations. BVA? All right, go ahead and drop out of the share. Oh, yes, I will. And we'll go back to our slides. Thank you so much. Great job. Thank you. So as we think about Office 365, from a glance perspective, uh, of course, you just saw some of the great features we like to talk about from the new Office. Uh, Manish talked about running Office anywhere with the Office on Demand. Again, if you have a computer that you need to get to the full experience and not just the web Office Online in a browser, uh, that capability. Many questions have come in the Q&A around per user licensing. But also realizing that there's the behind the scenes servers, right? Uh, that was one of the things that we talked about uh, in our agenda that you know behind the scenes, uh, we have some different services, uh, exchange that many know as exchange servers, exchange online. Uh, and part of the exchange online conversation is that free busy, that scheduling, uh, managing resources. You can put uh, you know different resources in there as well. You have some built-in personal archiving, but there's also uh, on the E3 SKU uh, or adding uh, the uh, advanced archiving function uh, gives us the legal hold uh, if you need to have that legal hold. Uh, in the personal archiving, it counts against the 50 gig mailbox. And again, that was a change uh, roughly four or five months ago where we went from a 25 gig mailbox to a 50 gig mailbox. Uh, if you're using the advanced archiving legal hold, uh, it's unlimited uh, from an archiving perspective uh, and does not count against the 50 gig uh, space. Many uh, information in there about you know, connecting to you know, the, the documents and file sharing and you know, how do I manage that and then you know, some of the competitive uh, conversations, uh, co-authoring, that's all delivered through our collaboration suite known as SharePoint Online. Uh, that's where we uh, have that centralized storage. I saw uh, many of you, I think it was like 80% that were doing a lot of attachments. And so uh, this really helps reduce, I'm not going to say eliminate, but it helps reduce the number of attachments that you may be uh, sending uh, to one another. You can you know, post it in SharePoint or even to the OneDrive, manage shared documents, who has access. And it's not just to other people that have Office 365 access. Uh, you can share documents uh, with people that don't have an Office 365 account uh, as well. So you know, that sharing uh, the documents, uh, maintaining some control, uh, deciding who can and cannot get to it, who has read-only, edit, uh, all part of the SharePoint Online, the collaboration, and the co-authoring is delivered through SharePoint Online as well. And you can even co-author uh, with the Office Online. So in a browser, uh, you can co-author uh, in the browser as well. And then finally, Link Online, uh, our IM, our presence, voice over IP, those of you that may have used Skype or uh, Google Talk, things of that nature, uh, will feel right at home. It's a a voice over IP complete solution uh, where we have IM and presence delivered in the cloud. Uh, as we look at tying it into voice over IP that does re currently require a server on premise or working with a hoster uh, that can provide some of that dial tone. But that's some of the advanced capabilities uh, that is available in the link online uh, as well. And then also, as I saw, many of you are currently using Skype. Uh, the ability to you know, continue to have those Skype contacts through what we call Skype Federation. And your Skype contacts can even see your presence information as well. And that's what we mean with that federation. Not only having the communication, but being able to see that presence information. All right, let's uh, kind of get through a, a couple other slides, uh, and then we'll probably go into uh, the Q&A for time's sake. Uh, but I, I do have some links here um, that you know, I think are really important as we think about why Microsoft.com, uh, a great Google Compete conversation. Uh, and again, showing some of that seamless experience, showing some of that capability uh, as we go 
between different devices and different platforms. We like to call that a round trip experience. Uh, so a great site if you're uh, looking at you know that conversation of Office 365 versus Google. Um, why would we want to look at Microsoft? Some great case studies of different customers um, and talking about you know Google and why they chose Microsoft. So again, whymicrosoft.com. And then let's talk about what is currently available um, as we think about uh, the Office 365 for nonprofits. Um, currently, uh, we have what's called the uh, E1 and E3 are the main SKUs that we've been talking about today because that is the suite of products. There is also just the Office. So if you want just the Office that we talked about where we have Word, Excel, PowerPoint on that 5 by 5 by 5 that would be the Office Pro Plus for nonprofits, and that's a $2 uh, a month uh, conversation. The E3 is everything we've been talking about, including Office. Um, and we look at that at the 450 price range. Uh, the E1 is without the Office bit. So some of you that are already in Office 2013, that's great. You, you have that already there. You could connect that uh, into the E1. Uh, and again, recommended from a donation perspective there. Uh, and then the online archiving, again, if you wanted to add that archive legal hold, if you were not on the E3, because it comes with the E3, so if you wanted to add that in, that's on the dollar. Uh, and then very soon, just around the corner, um, we have some things coming from a 365 small business uh, for nonprofits. So uh, stay tuned. Some exciting announcements uh, happening uh, just around the corner. And then as I think about the, pro the process and signing up, and uh, TechSoup has a phenomenal uh, website. We'll, we'll go into that in just a moment just to see it. Uh, some of the different resources that are available there, but also helping uh, with the conversation of, well, how do I do this? Has the links, uh, has the information. But again, basically you sign up for a trial of the E3, and then there needs to be some eligibility uh, that has to happen. Um, and then that's when the changes and move into that nonprofit uh, status uh, for you. Uh, but you know, more importantly, start using uh, the service. And uh, if you do want to go to the E1, again, once you're validated, uh, you'll have the ability to transition from that trial offer uh, to that donated uh, E1 offering as well. A couple other things from an important point. Uh, again, partners, uh, you know, we encourage that you know, if you're not as comfortable with setting this up uh, on your own to reach out to a Microsoft partner. Um, and have them help you through the process. There's many uh, of our SMB partner space um, that you know, works uh, with many nonprofits, so they're familiar with the process. Uh, they, they will help you through uh, the, the different pieces of conversation, uh, and then we can see some of the other things uh, from a uh, communications, the religious organization, uh, and some of our timing uh, periods for that. Wanted to hit again the trust principles. Uh, so realize that you know we kind of talked a little bit about this. Uh, that you know we respect the privacy uh, in our commercial packages, and this falls into the commercial space of Microsoft, not the consumer space. Um, you know it's seen as a paid offering, um, and again there's some donation, obviously uh, conversation free for nonprofits. But uh, the key there is. Um, we respect the privacy. We are not scanning this information. We are not uh, selling it to advertising. Um, you know, this is part of our trust principles. Uh, again, we try to be a leader uh, in the industry uh, and have some great uh, success stories about our compliancy. Uh, and if you want some more information on that, uh, we have a Office 365 Trust Center. Um, so if you go out to the Trust Center, it, uh, it actually was uh, recently refreshed, uh, so saw a new screen uh, as I went out uh, this week to it. Uh, so you know, some great information, some great videos, some testimonies, uh, as well as uh, some of the uh, documents that you may be looking for, especially if you're talking about a HIPAA compliancy uh, and looking at the chain of ownership uh, of the data, uh, understanding our you know, policies, uh, and what we're trying to you know, lead the industry with. This is a great site uh, to go out and get that information. 
Real quickly, I did want to share uh, an application, so I'm going to go back into demo mode again and pull up uh, out on the tech soup site because it's a, a phenomenal resource uh, as we think about you know the Office 365. So we can see here uh, some of the information from a blog post and some of the trainings Becky's been involved with. Uh, we can we have some uh, information on getting help, uh, some additional webinars. I know that this is not the first webinar, so uh, some other webinars and links and information uh, that's out there. And as we come out here. Um, and go in. Are you ready for you know Microsoft Office? So again, some more information. Uh, you know, some great information around Office 365 and the different plans. Here's a, a feature comparison chart, very similar to what we just saw in the slide deck. Migration, some links. TechSoup. Uh, saw some information there about you know finding the right partners. Well. Again, this is where the partnership with TechSoup uh, and what they are delivering uh, to the nonprofit community uh, again goes without saying. Um, you know, the commitment they have uh, to making sure that you get uh, the appropriate support uh, and solutions that you need to deliver on the Office 365, as well as. Microsoft, and you know, I know that TechSoup does non-Microsoft as well. Just a, a great organization, uh, and some things to look at, uh, you know, in collaborating and delivering your IT needs that you need for your nonprofit. So as we wrap up and get to some of the Q and A um, that we have, and again, we'll uh, answer some of the questions uh, live, but we'll also go uh, text as well. Um, you know. Leave this as one of our closing comments here. Why does it make good sense? Well, you know these are the business ready tools. Some of you have made some investments. Uh, you know, and I, when I think about that, that's more than monetary. Uh, as you're on Office 2010, 2013, um, understanding the platform uh, and and the ribbon. Uh, it was great to see that we only had a few on Office 2003. Uh, again, up to date. You know, we've delivered hundreds of new features uh, through Office 365, and continue to deliver those features. And you know, things like the announcement for Office for the iPad. Uh, great conversation around adding uh, new capabilities for the customers that have multiple types of devices, both Microsoft and non-Microsoft. In some cases, no. Upfront cost uh, and others, depending on your SKUs, very low uh, cost uh, from a uh, OPEX perspective. Uh, some as a donation, some as uh, a fixed cost, but definitely a significant reduction. And again, that's one of the great things uh, that I take pride in working for Microsoft and, and being committed. And when I was a former partner before joining Microsoft, I had the privilege of working with several nonprofit organizations. Uh, in the Midwest and uh, leverage uh, some of the donations uh, that, that we have seen Microsoft committed to. And then again, as we kind of talked, uh, just kind of reiterating that last point, uh, it's really focused around one user uh, but multiple devices. So with that, uh, Becky, I don't know, do you got some particular questions that you wanted to get out in front of everybody? Sure. Yeah, we actually have a lot. And your last tile here on this slide, um, we had a lot of people who aren't still totally clear on the devices and licenses. So, you right. know, they say, can you get more than five licenses? So, you can get more than five licenses. Each license comes with user ability for that one user to access it on five mobile, five PC. So. But you need licenses for each individual in your organization. Is that correct? I just want to make sure that's yeah, clear well, for everyone. It really, is, it's it's reiterating the point that it's it's a different world of work that we live in today. That traditional Microsoft licensing was always on that per device, right? And it looked at things at a per device, uh, and that that's how we licensed our software. Well, now we realize that many users have multiple devices, so we're just changing the lens, and instead of looking at it on a per device, where a person may have to spend three, four, 
5x because they have to buy it for all their devices. We're looking at it as a per user subscription model, and then we're giving them the rights to install it on five PCs or Macs, so five computers, right? Then five different types of tablets. You know, the the main one there is the iPad, uh, and then uh, the mobile. You know, as we think about the Android phones, the iPhone, and of course the Windows phones. So, you know, that that's right. 15, but each instance uh, should cover most. <laughs> But again, right, but each instance of logging in is that same individual person's setup. So when you log in from your mobile phone, you're seeing the same data, the same files, your same access yep. of you as the individual user. So I want to make that clear because it is one user's profile essentially that can be accessed right. on all of those different devices. So if you have 20 staff members, you need 20 licenses. And then each of those staff members can access it on up to those 15 devices. Yeah, that's what delivers. So I that hope that clarifies. Experience. There's a lot of confusion. Yep. yep. Um, great. Well, we have a lot of other questions, and we are almost at the top of the hour, so I'm just going to show some of the additional resource slides. We will send out the links that are in this additional resources that includes a short video tutorial that walks you through. It's maybe two or three minutes long that walks you through the process of requesting that trial through Microsoft. And then TechSoup is actually the organization that validates that you're an eligible nonprofit to receive the donation. Um, and then so your account then automatically is updated to not being the trial any longer and to being the full-fledged account. Um, so let's see, we have, so we again, have some people some more asking questions about coming in on the licensing. So it says, what if you have a PC sure. which two different users use? Do you need two licenses? Yes, it is a yes. per user license. Then it says, what is the cost of each user license over the five users? Okay, so again, it's a single user license, but they get five devices. So if you had five different users, it would be five times either free or five times you know, the 450, right? But that would be five different users. Right. And so if organizations already have um, you know, installed Office 2013, for example, they may want to go with just the E1 option that BVA covered earlier where you get it for free and that gives you access to the Office 365 features that you don't get access to Office Professional, Office Cloud, or yeah, is that Oh, you know, you get Office Cloud. You don't get Office Professional um, installed additionally. Am I explaining that right? <laughs> yes. All right. So we hope that helps people. And, and like I said, we'll send around that little tutorial video along with the prior webinars that we've presented. For those of you who are looking to potentially migrate on your own, we just did a webinar um, a month or two ago that has sort of those bigger steps. So it goes a little bit more in depth on if you're looking to start using Link. Um, that one's probably the easiest to get started with based on the experts and what they tell me that you can get people set up on that really quickly. Um, and you don't need to have licenses for everybody who just uses it as a participant. They can just sign on with a, their own email address to be able to participate, but if you want to be able to set up link meetings and do more with it, then you might need the licenses. Um, and then there, it goes more in depth on in migrating email from an Exchange server, or um, if you don't have Exchange set up, how to set that up in the cloud. And then SharePoint, which is a bit more complicated. So it gives you some instructions on the do's and don'ts, and so I'll make sure to include that in the follow-up. Um, I'm going to show one other list of additional resources before we get off the line, and hopefully we can answer some of the questions in chat still. Um, we have a partner that's a partner of Microsoft and TechSoup called Tech Impact, and they will help you do a phone assessment of whether or not Office 365 is the right move for your organization. They'll have a conversation with you to assess your organization's specific needs, and that's a $10 administrative fee um, to access that. And then they have these workshops available on Office 365 migration. So if you're looking to do this yourself in your small organization with 20 or few users, they have um, a series of workshops that they make available for the $300 admin fee. If you're a larger organization and you're looking to do it yourself, they have this, uh, this larger org 
and IT department workshop series. Um, and then they also have a, a workshop that's just on SharePoint migration. So we want to make sure you guys know about those because it's probably the least expensive way to do it yourself if you don't have a dedicated IT staff that's already um, really familiar with Office 365 and what the migration entails. So those are some options to look at. Um, I also want to go ahead and let you know about some upcoming webinars that are on our agenda. So if you're able to join us for future ones, we have a webinar on May 28th coming up on how to help youth find free meals this summer. So if you work in a youth organization or a library where you have youth patrons, this is a great webinar to find out about how to connect them to free summer lunches. Um, and then we have another webinar with Microsoft on tips and tricks with using Excel on May 29th. And then we'll be doing the second part in our mobile series on mobile content strategies with Amy Sample Ward on June 5th. We don't really have time to get through more questions. We're already over time. So I'm going to leave the chat window open and we'll try and answer some in there for the next few minutes. But I'm going to go ahead and thank our presenters. Thank you Manish and thank you Brian for your expertise today. Um, you can also go, uh, if you're on Twitter and you like to tweet, we'll tweet this out too. You can tweet at Office 365 and at Microsoft Helps. And those Twitter handles are really great at responding to very specific questions about what a tool can do and can't do. Um, so we'll make sure to tweet that out or chat that out to you in case you're on Twitter and you want to ask questions there. And additionally, you can join us at TechSoup.org slash community in our community forums where you can access experts, post your questions, and um, share your expertise if you have some on this topic. Thank you all so much. I'd like to also thank our webinar sponsor ReadyTalk for the use of their platform. They make it available to us so that we can present these webinars to you on a regular basis. Like I said, I hope you'll join us for one of those future events. When you close your window, a new window or tab may pop open with the post-event survey. So please take a moment to tell us how we did today and give us your feedback so we can continue to improve our webinar programming. Thank you all so much and have a terrific day.